and a good morning to you Facebook Live uh, here on the Hizar channel. Uh, every morn morning as I'm exercising and, and just spending time with the Lord, I wait for a word. And if I get a word, if I receive a word, I take the liberty to share it on this channel. Now, I'm not saying everybody must listen to it every day. I don't expect that. Um, I know it's a lot of content, but, you know, maybe the one day you listen, you receive something from God. And maybe the next day you don't have data, you can't listen. That's also cool. I'm just saying the word and preaching the word in season and out of season. And today I want to talk about seasons, actually. Um, and I want to ask you if you have an understanding of the times that we are in. And um, this was actually quite interesting for me in First Chronicles 12, 32. It says there, And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know how Israel ought to react. So these men had understanding of the times. And what happened was it actually caused them to be able to react in an appropriate manner. And uh, that is one of the things that you learn. Um, uh, years ago, I did some security training. I also went to the military for a brief period. And uh, in the training that we received, it was, what do you do when you are under pressure? Uh, it's sort of like your reflex kicks in and you're doing exactly what you were trained to do, exactly what you were prepared to do. And as times change, as seasons change, we should have a reaction. Now, what I wrote here this morning, I said, like the sons of Issachar, understanding of the times have now become an essential part of the Christian life. It's essential. We can no longer float around religiously waiting to receive the next message from our spiritual leaders or gurus. In other words, we, we can't wait for others to lead us. We must be spirit-led. We must be led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, we can receive from the gifts of teaching, the gifts of preaching, the gift of prophecy in the body of Christ. But the fact of the matter is the internal guidance of the Holy Spirit will be an essential part for the Christian life in the season and the time that we are living in. And what I said here is just listen to what the uh, the Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Colossians. And I believe this morning actually, and I hope I'm going to be able to actually get this across. We are going to get to three essential things that the church needs in Colossians. It's actually, it's it's all in Colossians. I uh, This morning it is as if the Holy Spirit just led me into Colossians. And I'm going to just read little portions of scripture. You can go and look uh, at this uh, afterwards. But it was just the things that sort of jumped out for me in these sections and I believe that there's a, there's a point to be made here. And, and I believe that the church of Jesus Christ should take heed of this. Because I do believe that the Bible is spirit inspired. And that these words were actually written uh, very appropriately for our time. Now it, it says here, and I'm reading first in chapter 2. And then I'm going to be jumping back to chapter 1. Because in chapter 1, uh, Paul actually gives the church the answer. He actually tells them what do they need to navigate uh, during the turbulent times. What do they need to actually um, get through these times? But he talks, he elaborates a bit about that. Now he says, Now I say, lest anyone deceives you with persuasive words. So what he's saying here is, is be very careful for persuasive words. It's, it, you need to get a, a spirit witness. Uh, I said the other day, I said to somebody, with Christians, a lot of times you, you can actually take dog poo and you can sandwich it between Jesus and Jesus and the church will eat that poo because of, uh, it, it, because of it being in a Jesus sandwich. It sounds gross. It's, it sounds um, very uh, um, callous. But at the end of the day, it's very, very true. We find it hard to, to say anything about anything that's, that, that has Jesus at the, at the front and the end of the, of, the, of the sentence. And the problem is that we can be then persuaded by words. And he says, therefore... Uh, as you received Jesus Christ, so walk in Him. And He says, now you must walk in Him and rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith as you've been taught, abounding with thanksgiving. So He says, you received Jesus, you should continue to walk in Him, you should be rooted and built up in Him and, and established. In other words, strengthened, made whole, in faith and standing it. And then he says, beware lest anyone cheat you. Now, this uh, is, is very critical. Uh, we were talking now about persuasive words, and now I'm talking about cheating. It, it, and what the enemy wants to do, he wants to cheat you out of your inheritance by giving you something different, something that looks good, 
Kind of like religion. It looks good. It sounds good. It's got Jesus in it, but there's no power. Paul says to the church in, in Corinth, he says, I didn't come with persuasive words, but I came with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. And in church history, you can look that the church had power until the last apostle died. And a few of, of, of the early church fathers had power. You can read of miracles. You can read of, of, of things they did. Then you read of, of an era, era of persecution. Then you read of Emperor Constantine coming in, establishing organized religion with all the bishops and the cardinals and, and, and the popes and, and all of that thing. And the church history is, is plain from there onwards. You see ecumenical councils uh, that were conducted by a, a large church group. Uh, you see a church policy formulating. You see that the Bible was expanded with what, what is known as deuterocanonical books. Uh, you see that big buildings were built, a nice uh, architecture was done, uh, impressive things were done. But at the end of the day, the one thing that, that went uh, missing was, was power. And he says, yeah, don't let anybody deceive you with persuasive words. And then he says, you must be rooted, built up, established in your faith with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men. Now, these ecumenical councils... Uh, they are the traditions of man. I mean, it's actually called tr church tradition. So, the traditions of men. So, so, you get into the area of traditions of men according to the basic principles of this world. In other words, these things are connected to worldly doctrine, worldly principle, and not according to Christ. In other words, if you look at Christ, and you look at the radiance of Christ, you look at the power of Christ, you look at the strength of Christ, you look at Christ breaking into humanity, alleviating suffering at every level of life stage. Children, old people, elderly people, young people, uh, uh, addicted people, demonic people, um, sick people, those with flesh rotting off, um, those blind, those uh, uh, even dead. You, you look at Christ breaking into humanity and, and, and alleviating those kind of situations and suffering. You look at the areas of power. But then we go back to traditions of men we go back to vain deceit we go back to philosophies and an empty an empty what called what paul here calls empty deceit it's it's like empty things it's got nothing in it it looks good it sounds good um, when i studied theology uh, i did my degree in theology through through uh, you know through a, a university level institution it was beautiful church history the writings of luther the writings of calvin the writings of of of, of john wesley and Charles Wesley and, and all the different uh, um, people that had an influence in, in Christian history. All of those things are wonderful. And I studied hours and hours and hours, reading hours and hours and hours. But as a, as a Christian, if you read my book, uh, um, uh, uh, Finding God, you will see as a Christian born in power. For me, uh, you know, I always kept in mind that these are beautiful things, but they cannot replace the power of the Holy Spirit. They cannot replace the move of the Holy Spirit. They cannot replace the guidance of the Holy Spirit. They cannot replace the working of the Holy Spirit. In other words, you know, how those functioning gifts function in the body. They cannot replace it. They, it's great. It's nice to know those things. It's nice to know church history. It's nice to know hermeneutics, homiletics, soteriology, eschatology. It's nice to know all those deep theological words. And it's wonderful. But it's not, it's not life-changing. <laughs> life-changing is power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and then you will be my witnesses in, 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 in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Wait in Jerusalem, tarry in Jerusalem until you receive the power. And that is what the enemy is trying to steal in these times and seasons, and you will see it. He's trying to, he's trying to get you into the flesh, away from the power areas. What will happen in the last days? Uh, 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 Paul writes to Timothy, he says, they will have an image of godliness. Uh, they, they will look like they're godly. They will smell like they're godly, but they will deny the power. And that is the problem that we have in the body of Christ today. And if you are led by leaders, unfortunately, spiritual leaders, that are not connected, and, and, and that's unfortunately the problem. When we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'm, I'm talking in great love this morning, I'm not criticizing, but I'm saying uh, when we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit and the connection with the Spirit, we are governed from a lesser dimension of truth. In other words, we are only looking at the physical. Now, here we go. 
I really want to, I hope you get this this morning. I really pray that you get this because it's difficult for me to share. He says, let no one cheat you. So then he says, hold fast, um, you know, to Christ. And then he says, um, he says, let no one cheat you of your reward, delighting in false humility and the worship of angels in intruding into those things which uh, he has not seen, vain, vain, vainly puffed up in his fleshly mind and not holding fast to the head from from uh, whom all the body is knit together nourished the joints the ligaments uh, grows with increase that is from god so what is he saying here? and i know i didn't read that very well but <laughs> what is he saying there he's saying let no one cheat you out of this especially not somebody that has lost connection with the head he, and then he says here this head uh, is is actually nourishing the entire body. It's knitting together the joints, the ligaments, and 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 grows with the increase. So he says the increase, the the connection, everything is is coming from God. And if you lose connection with that head, you will be in big trouble. You you will not be able to have an understanding of the seasons and the times. In fact, you will just go with the flow, and you will float like a dead fish uh, down the river. Uh, you will not you will not even see that something's happening in, in, in this generation in the in the times that we're living in. Come on, people. Just watch just watch television. I don't know who of you has a thing called DSTV. Just watch what is going on on television. And you can tell me that, that there's uh, th- there's nothing wrong, but then there's something wrong with you. Because I, I know I watch a lot of the, the television shows. I like, I like my movies. I must be honest. I find entertainment in those things. But I know God's spoken to me many times and said to me, Look, Richard, if you really want to get into the power areas, you must cut the influence of this world over you. And currently you are being programmed by the, if I can call it this, the whore of Babylon uh, to, 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 to adapt to the cultures of this world. What, what is known in religious circles as postmodernism, uh, an era where, um, where everything is, is right according to your relativity. In other words, what you think is right is right. There's no measure of, of truth anymore. Uh, you can't say the Bible says this because the Bible is just a book that uh, some people um, uh, appreciate, but others say it's a good book for guidance, but you cannot use it for, for, for direct doctrine and lifestyle. So things are, are changing a lot and the culture is becoming extremely, extremely intolerant, uh, distolerant, whatever you, you say in English. It doesn't tolerate us anymore. It doesn't tolerate the born again, spiritful believer that's on fire for God. It doesn't tolerate them anymore. I mean, I have Christians looking at me over their glasses because they don't like me. Not because of the fact that I'm not a likable guy, maybe I'm not, but not because of the fact, but because of the things I say, it really pees them off because at the end of the day, you can't argue with the word. And I'm not a critical person. I love everybody. I work with everybody. I've had various denominations on my shows, on my radio shows. I've got no problem. His art is, is, is a kingdom work. It's not a, a denominational work. So we, we don't have a problem with anybody, but we are going to call out the seasons and the times and we are going to say the truth because the truth will set you free. Yet it says, these people have lost their connection with the head and now they're trying to cheat you. The, the Bible says they, they might not even know it, but they're trying to cheat you out of the power that is flowing from God to Christ to the body uh, which Christ is the head of and supports every function in the body. Everything that happens has to be what Jesus said when he says, if you do not abide in me, you can do nothing. Not some things, nothing. And, and when he said nothing, I mean, there's a lot of people that are not abiding in Christ today. They, they are abiding in religion. They are abiding in tradition. But they are doing things. But Jesus calls those things nothing. Why? Because in Matthew 25, he says many people say that, that, Lord, we did this in your name, we did that in your name, and then he says, go away, I don't know you. How does that happen? It happens when we've moved away from the connection with the head where we are doing everything ourselves. Listen, that is a natural human tendency. If you can't find God, if you can't hear God, then create a God. That is exactly what Israel did 
when when Moses was on the on the mountain, they said, "Make us a god." And if you read that that uh, when Aaron uh, said he, he threw the gold in and out came the scow, which is a funny story. But but when if you read that, it says, "Here, O Israel, is your gods that led you out of Egypt." So it actually said that cow, that golden calf, is is God, and and that is unfortunately what we do. We create golden calves uh, from finances from wealth from from gold the gold that they built the calf from was the very gold that god gave them god said when when you he said to abram he said to abram when you your your descendants will leave egypt they will not leave in poverty they will live in wealth it's a sign for us as the believer that when we come to christ and we are delivered we can walk in overflow it's a sign but when that night, when, when, when the Passover was in Israel, left Egypt, they went to the Egyptians uh, um, and they asked them, give me something. And the Egyptians were what the Bible calls favorably disposed towards Israel. And they blessed them with a lot of gold, with a lot of silver, so much so that they could build the calf, they could build the tabernacle, they could establish all those things, make all the vessels of gold, make the Ark of the Covenant, do all of those things with what they received as they were leaving that night. So it was a great blessing. But what did they do with that blessing? They actually made it into a calf. Um, as the church was established in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2, and we see the flow of the church, it came to a point where religion was born after the apostles died, as I said, and where we had to create something. Why? Because we had to find God. We had to show God and and uh, unfortunately, why did this happen? As it says in the scripture, because people lose connection with the head. If you can hear God, if God speaks to you, if you have a relationship with God, if you have fellowship with God, you don't need to make a calf. You don't need to create an order to, to keep people in, in, in subjection, uh, to keep people in oppression. Why did the church uh, uh, translate the word into a language that the, that the masses couldn't understand it? Because they wanted one guy to preach and the others to listen. And, and, and all of the members of the community of the church, they would, didn't want them to have a proper understanding of God's word. They wanted them to be dependent upon this system because this system uh, had to be fed with finances. It had to be fed and, and it had to be feared. And, and look, look at the Crusades. You can see how our, our fear entered in because a, a lot of people were killed if they didn't accept Christ, which was never instruction. If you look at the Gospels, Jesus never killed anybody to accept him. In fact, when they left in John 6, 6, he just said, well, go. Do you also want to go? So I don't know where we got our, our, our deformed idea of God and our deformed idea of, 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 of uh, how to serve God. It's, it's a total... Uh, it, it is what took me to it, it's what pushed me to drugs because I, I didn't want to serve this God. And that is the thing. So it says here, then it then it actually says here, it says, so so we stopped at the point where these joints are now held together, and these people that are cheating you, uh, that are that are actually taking you out of what God has for you, they not they've lost connection. They like I say, it's, it's I'm not judging them, but they've lost connection. It's clear to see that they've lost connection. Then uh, the apostle goes on to tell the church and he says, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. What does he say? He says, don't eat, don't, no, no, he's not saying that. He's saying, don't let those things that are physical, that you are seeing with your eyes, dominate your mind. Don't let that become your only reality because the spiritual world is a greater reality. And then he, 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 you know, he, he goes on to say, that and, and I mean I, I, I want to end off because I don't want to make these videos too long. He then in this scripture he, he, he talks about he says having dis disarmed the, the principalities and the powers he made a public spec spectacle of them triumphing over them. So what is he saying? He says don't handle, don't taste, don't touch. Jesus made a public spectacle of the enemy. He's got no power. He's got no strength. But religion gives the devil more than he has. Religion has actually become the spokesperson for satanic power because a lot of times religion uh, attributes satanic occurrences to Christ. And they say this is from God. It's not from God. <laughs> Let me tell you it's not. But the fact of the matter is uh, a lot of people have been cheated. 
They've been cheated out of their inheritance. They've been cheated out of the dimension where they should live. They are handling, tasting, and touching. He says, which are concerned things which are to perish. So he says, these things are going to perish according to the commandments and the doctrines of men. So he says, these are, are, are human things. He says, these things indeed have an appearance of wisdom. So he says, they look good. They smell good. But he says, uh, uh, in self-imposed religion, false humility and neglect of body, but are of no value. So it says, they are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. So it says, you cannot... You, you cannot use the physical commandments, the law, to actually get that flesh down. It's not going to happen that way. We know what he says in Galatians. He says, then you have to walk in the Spirit. You have to do this from the Spirit. The change has to happen from the inside out, not from the outside. It's no use getting a certificate. It's no use going to, and I'm not saying it's wrong. Listen, I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's no use going with the main motive to Sunday school to get your certificate, to get your acceptance to, and that, and to get your baptism and to do, you know, those things are, are they have a, a self-imposed religion. They have a, a false humility. They look good. They have an appearance of wisdom. But at the end of the day, Paul says, these things will not stop the flesh. These things will not stop the flesh. They will not stop the fleshly. They will not even influence the natural world. The only thing that can influence the natural world is the, is, is the spiritual things. So let me end off with this. And, and this is sort of the three essential things that I believe the church needs. And um, God bless you and, and really thank you for, for watching. I, I do this totally in faith. I, I'm just, uh, somebody said one day, he's just babbling. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter what, what people are saying about it. I just want you to hear in your spirit. If it's nonsense, switch it off. You know, don't listen. I'll be. This will be uh, on the internet long after I've been raptured, and I'm with Jesus. Uh, you know, people will still be listening to this and, and probably sneering uh, and trying to kill me for it. Uh, Colossians one verse nine. For that, for this reason, uh, since the day I heard of it, uh, and that is now of the Colossians, I do not cease to pray for you. So he says, I pray for you. And what does he pray for? Now, now here's the three essential things that the church needs. Now, we've just read in Colossians, I've given you images of people, I've connected it with church history. I think I've, I've done a reasonable job, not a good job, <laughs> but a reasonable job because the Lord works through stammering lips. You know, um, none of us are perfect, but I think I've done a, re I hope I've done a reasonable job. But now I want to give you these three essential things, and that's what I, I want to leave you with. I want to leave you with this to go and apply this in your life. To go and because the word must move from observation to interpretation to revelation to application. You have to get to a point where you apply what you've heard. It's no use me talking and you just going say, "Oh, that was a nice message," and I'm going on with no. You have to now identify that people are trying to cheat you, that the enemy is trying to cheat you through people. I'm not just talking about religious leaders. I'm not just talking. I'm just talking about humanity in general. I'm talking about the culture. You are, you are being pulled into handling, tasting, touching. You are being pulled into looking at something that has an appearance of wisdom. Uh, you are being pulled into something that's self-imposed religion. You are being pulled into all these things by the world, by the system, by the God of this world, who is trying to set you up. And if you don't know it, you don't have the understanding of the times. You don't know what, what, what times we're living in. You can't see it. You, you, you're looking at it, and, and that's unfortunately the truth. If you are lukewarm currently, Christians that are lukewarm, they will listen to this message and they will say to themselves, what's this dude rattling about? There's nothing like this going on. On TV is still perfect. There's no funny things going on there like men kissing men and women kissing women. There's, there's no, that's nothing wrong. That's, that's acceptable. This is our culture. You know, you have to say, oh, little children wanting to dress up as girls. I mean, it's just saying, what's this guy rattling about? What's he, what's he talking about? This is normal. It's not normal. It's not normal according to the word of God. I'm not judging the, the sinner, but I, I am judging the sin. At the end of the day, there's, there's a problem. I mean, I, I believe God changes people. I've heard of testimonies how God changes people. But the fact of the matter is, if the, if, if the church of Jesus Christ, if we can't get to the point where we say, listen, 
We want to help you, not we want to support you in your error. We want to uh, just accept you and make you feel good and all of that. And you live this life knowing in your heart that what you are doing is not from God. It's not right. I, I, I mean, what can I say? I'm not doing hate speech. I'm just doing real speech. I'm saying it's not right. We need to get to a point where we, as the Church of Jesus Christ, as people in Islam, as people in Buddhism, as people have their religious freedom, as they say, to say what they want to say, to say what they believe. Um, If the Muslims are praying three times a day, if they're doing their things, they're washing their their hands and, 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 and everything in the basins, I mean, why can't the Christians say what we believe? Why is it always offensive when we say, when th- these things come on television, when we see them and we, and we think it's right, we have a problem. Houston, <laughs> I say, Jesus, we have a problem. We have a problem because then there's something wrong with us. Then, then we've definitely lost connection with the head. Then we've de- definitely lost uh, a connection with the Holy Spirit. Then we are definitely no different. Uh, Come out from among them. uh, um, Friendship with the world is enmity towards God. I'm not not being a a, a bigot and and preaching religious things and and, and trying to give you doom and gloom. The grace of God is there. Jesus uh, reached out to the horrors. He he reached reached out to the prostitutes. He reached out to the murderers. He reached out to the the crooks and the thieves of his generation. He, He had no problem with the sinner. He had problem with the sin. And normally when the love of Christ comes into a situation, sin will change. People want to change. I met a guy once who was in an alternative lifestyle and, and he, he said to me, he was unhappy all the time and even when the churches accepted him, he was still unhappy. So what did he do? He shot himself in his, in his stomach with a, with a firearm because he wanted to die. He wasn't happy. People aren't happy if they're not connected to God. No drugs, no, no, no therapy, no, no, no positive speaking, Nothing can get them to the point of joy, fulfillment, happiness until they have made Jesus Lord of their lives. They have a relationship. They are connected to the vine. The the, the power of the vine is flowing into the branches and the branches are producing the fruit. And those fruit are to the world the sign as they see those fruit. They are seeing the light of God's love shining through the church of Jesus Christ. This was God's original intent when jesus said i will build my church he was talking about a church that would be built by the power of his love by the example of his sacrifice and that church would walk in the fire and the power of the holy spirit he said to them wait until you receive power and then you go and you do what you're supposed to do don't think you can do it because you've got a degree you've got a qualification yeah, you, you've been ordained, you've got a title. No, it's not about that. It's about the power of the Holy Spirit that God has to release. And I'm trusting God for that power. And the, and the Lord is saying to me every day, not legalism, not the law. No, he's saying to me, I will have to make some sacrifices in my life if I want to walk in that level of power. Because with every level of death, there's a, nev- there's a next of power. Power is not uh, screaming, shouting. It's not stirring up the crowd. It is, uh, it is the, the power of, of the Holy Spirit flowing through us as we healed and surrender. Then the power of the Spirit just starts flowing right through our lives. So let me end off. I'm going too long here. Colossians 1.9 I was reading. Paul says, I, I'm praying for you guys that you may be filled with, this, with, with the knowledge of His will. Number one. You need the knowledge of His will. If you don't know what God's will is, a lot of people say, I don't know what God's will is. If you don't know, if you get cancer, wisdom. So he says, the second thing you need to know is have is wisdom. The wisdom is actually how to apply the will in those areas. That is the wisdom. So when you have the scripture, how do you actually... Are you there? Let's see. Yeah, we're going on. Sorry about that interruption. We lost internet there. Um, so how do you actually apply that will? How do you apply it? You have the w- wisdom. And then, you know, the last one he says there, spiritual understanding. So there's three things that, that he mentions in that scripture. It's the knowledge of his will, the wisdom. In other words, how do you apply it? And then a spiritual understanding. That means looking at the prophetic times, looking at what's happening in our, in our dispensation, looking at things, 
seeing, a, seeing those things spiritually. Christians are talking and you're hearing them talking about the economic crash and uh, as if they are totally out of control. As if God is out of control. As if we don't know what's going to happen now. There's crime, there's, 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 there's uh, um, unemployment, there's this problem, there's that problem. Oh, we don't know what's going to happen now. That shows a, a, a lack of, I would say, sp spiritual understanding. It shows a lack of spiritual understanding because it, it shows that, that you are not able to tap into the spirit and hear what is, what is, what is happening. What is happening? Why? why? Why do we have diseases? Why do we have famines? Why do we have an increase in earth, earthquakes, an increase in natural disasters? Why do we have it? Uh, a lot of Christians say, I don't know. You know, maybe God is talking. No, it's not God talking. It's the increase of iniquity on planet earth. It's those very things that you are watching on television that, that, we, that we thought when they're swearing at God and when they're blaspheming and when they're doing what they want to do and, and they're so proud and they say, oh, nothing happens, you know, nothing happens to us, we can do. No, something is happening to you, uh, Mr. Actor. Something is happening to you. You are, you are, uh, you are causing uh, the entire world to go into a, a, a position of iniquity. Where, where, where the balance between right and wrong is, is, is moving like this and the increase of death, the increase of destruction is coming over the planet. And if, if the Christians know this, then we respond to it because we know it's not about us. We are not of this world. We are, might be in this world as ambassadors, but we are not of this world. So we are not subject to the touch, taste and handle rules. We are living above this. We have that spiritual understanding. So let me ask you these three questions that, that I've taken from Colossians here. Do you have the knowledge of His will? Do you have the wisdom to apply that knowledge? In other words, do you have the wisdom to apply it in your life? And number three is, do you have a spiritual understanding? If the enemy can get you on those three areas, he will get you. You might have the knowledge of His will and not the wisdom uh, which I believe is the connection with the Holy Spirit, is that wisdom. It's that Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, that takes us into that truth so that we can know how to apply it. If you apply it wrong, you, you, your, your faith will fail because time and time again, you will see um, things not work and you will become uh, more and more despondent. And you'll say, well, you know what? This faith thing doesn't work. You know, it doesn't work for me. It might work for that guy, but it doesn't work for me. Uh, you, you become despondent and then you have to adjust your life. And normally when you've, when you've not applied the will correctly in wisdom, you will, you will shrink back. In other words, you will alter the will. <laughs> if you believed in healing as God's will, you, you, you received that revelation from the Holy Spirit. You interpreted the scripture in that way. But you haven't received healing for some other reason. Maybe it's a, it's a question of a seasonal thing where you have to wait or it might be a wisdom thing where you didn't apply it. For a period you might stand and then all of a sudden you might shrink back and say, well, now I don't know anymore. I thought I knew, but I don't. And that's unfortunately, if you don't apply these three uh, essential things, uh, you can find yourself in quite a difficult situation. Well, that's all for, for me. And sorry about the interruption and, and all the stuff. I hope this has been informative and I uh, actually hope it's been transformative where uh, it, it will transform your life um, if you can get into the understanding of times where you are walking with his will the wisdom to apply that will and then spiritual understanding of what exactly is going on God bless you and keep you and his light and face shine upon you in Jesus name